Good morning, everybody. It's Vapixie from Subjugated Gaming bringing you another episode of Horus Heresy Legions. We're not doing King of the Hill today. Today, I'm going to showcase two episodes, uh, two matches that I did against uh, Wintermore 54 here. Now, this was for our Oz prelims round two to get on the Australia team. As you can see, I won both of them to get onto the Australia team for the upcoming tournament. And also in this video, somebody asked about a Khan deck. I can't exactly remember who. I'll throw up their um, YouTube tag here. And so we're going to build that and play a couple of games of that to show how I would build and play Khan. So we'll jump into these ones first. So here we go. So here I decide that I'm going to keep both my cards, because they're both very good early game cards against anything he could really throw out to me, especially Mercy Forgiveness. If he plays any troops too early, we're going to be feeling very good. But we can't play anything turn one, so we just reduce his uh, attack and swing in for the advantage. Here he plays his Stealth Trip, the Scout, uh, which is one of the troops we need Mercy Forgiveness to get rid of as soon as possible. Now, I decide that I don't want to play the Ruler Fee here, because there's a likely chance he'll play another Stealth Troop. Which is exactly what happens. We also decided not to attack us so that we're not getting advantage on it, off it. So here we play the rule of fear and get rid of both of his troops. And to be honest, this move here is what I think is the deciding factor in this game was the fact that I was able to do that. Get both of his early troops off field and just gain so much advantage. Now he has to start from scratch again. We've already got our mercy forgiveness off so we can constantly get some decent damage in. We've got our flank units up, our fast units up. We're feeling very, very good at this stage. So I want to put pressure on the field, so I drop my 5-4 flank to deal with his troop. And then I'm pretty sure I swing for damage. Yes, I do. At this stage, I'm far enough ahead that just trading out damage is uh, very good for us. Now, here as well, we've got our Ambassador Mel Melgator here in order to bounce us back to hand to get even more ahead with the tempo. We also increase our energy to get faster to madness. So we bounce him and swing for even more damage. The faster we go at this stage, the better. You know, we're two energy up at this stage. He'll have a six energy turn, then we'll have an eight energy turn. That feels so good. Now, this is a bit annoying to have because he can constantly heal three, especially with the buff. And this is also difficult to get rid of sometimes. But we drop Curse's Chosen, reduces this guy's attack, so he's not that much of a threat anymore. He's so close to death that I decide to just go face, because these troops won't really matter. Sure, he can heal damage, but he also has to find a way to deal with this. And the only way he can deal with this is by sacrificing troops. And if he chose to sacrifice troops, then we're feeling so much better. So he'll swing one at face, and then one into the Curse's Chosen. And the only way to get rid of it is then to sacrifice his heal card, which is, ex which is exactly what we were expecting. Which is 100% fine. So we swing our Mel Melgator into death there, just so we can get the fast off um, our troop here. And now I'm d I play Nostromo so he can't attack. And then I swing the fast troop with the unstoppable to face, knowing it'll have one health left and that it will be able to kill him next turn. And we just leave this alive knowing that also next turn we could play the Reaper to kill this thing and then swing twice on face. But he has to be able to deal with this this turn, which he's unable to do, and so we can just swing face. Now, he bounces it back to the hand, meaning it won't get fast unless we have no troops. So we just swing the Recon Claw to die and play the fast troop out again to deal the last bit of damage. There were several, way several ways we could have done this, but I think that was the best. So that's the first match there. And we'll hop into the second match. So don't forget, these preliminary matches work in the way that is... You take two Warlords from two different factions, and you play those Warlords, and they have the same. And you have to win best two out of three. If you win with one of your Warlords, you cannot play that again. So, i.e., you have to win with both your Warlords. If you lose, you can use the same one again, but they are then using their different one. So, next up was Erlen versus Angron. Now, I always think this is a good matchup for Erlen, just because you can set up more damage. Like, he's dealing three damage free to you, but he's taking the Backlash, and we're not taking the Backlash when we play. 
So shoot for three first turn, and we open insanely well with both Wraith and Agnes Bond. A Goldstone Hunter for the speed, and a Last Talol. Talol? Tal Lass. I'm going to call him a Lass. The Lassie dude here. So we just shoot for three again, and we know he's not going to play very many troops. So we strike and fade his face. We're not too worried about the draw. The game's going to be over very quickly. We're both very aggressive warlords. So he just swings face and plays the heal card, which we're okay with. You know, he's going to play them, so we got to get rid of him regardless. So we get out the early Wraith, and we swing his face. Now, we could have kept the Strike and Fade to get the extra 4-4 um, four, four off Wraith, but I decided to be more aggressive with it because we had Brond for 5 energy instead of the Wraith-Strike and Fade combo. And here we are able to deal 3 damage to face and waste one of his fast troops on dealing with that, which is very good for us. Now, of course, here, we're just going to play Brond out. And say, now deal with it. You've used a fast card. Do you have another one? He cycles with Void Engagement to see what he gets. He hits a Tactic. Does three damage to us. Quite annoying, but it's going to happen. He then swings into the Brond there. And hopes for a 50-50 Mortar Strike. And he misses. Now, at this stage, that's very bad for him, but we also don't have any cards that are able to buff its attack anymore. So, we're going to dig for one by playing the Abandoned Supplies. And we get our giant-ass tank that we hardly ever play, and that's okay. We just swing face, get that 8 damage in, and play another beefy troop that he has to deal with. We're still not out of the woods here, but we're going okay. He increases his attack, that's absolutely fine. And he swings face still going aggressive, knowing that this will just suicide when it hits face. Which is okay with us, but we've got two fast things in hand. We just drew a buff spell, and with Erlen's ability, we can totally find a way to deal a 15 damage with this on field. So swing for 7, swing for the 5, use Erlen's ability just to finish it off. So those were the games that got me into the um, Australia team. Now the Australia team is 3 players. Hence why the bracket is so short. It's just you've got to be in the top three. Winning the first two gets us within that range. All right, now, we're going to build a Khan deck, and usually I don't show myself building decks, but I think I will this time because it's been asked. Khan's new art is awesome. So we'll select him, and we'll go through the process of building Khan. Now, we're going to start with Essentials. Strike and Fade, insanely good. Start with that. Um, we'll see how many tactics we got before Avoid Engagement. I do like this card, but it's definitely not an essential. I think it's a filler card. So we'll go to two drops now. Two drops. I really like Keth Bikes. Just being able to play them turn one and saying that's like three damage early game is really strong. So we're going to put them in, I think. Sweeping Advance, also, you know, essential card. Um, from here, I'm thinking Melgator. Potentially also Seek and Destroy because of the random damage of Khan could get you to trigger that. Wonders of Tizak as well could also be good, but we'll see how we go. Now, we absolutely want those fast cards. Uh, so we need all of those in. I think I also want to put Laz Rifle section in because it's still just an insanely good guard. If your pings off can't go right, you can use that to finish off certain troops and stuff like that. So I think I want to put it in. And Dewback is also such a great card that we're going to put it into. I don't think you can play a deck these days without Dewback. Need Wraith. Absolutely need Wraith. Need the, war the board wipe for no survivors. Absolutely. Five drops. Got to play Brond. I don't know if we want to play Gorchild. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But we absolutely want to play a board wipe. Just the one, I think. And I think I do want to play Manifest Destiny. When you're just attacking face with two attack, you can get pretty low pretty quick. Definitely want Armor of Mars up. I always think Godfather is such a trap to play, so we're not going to do it. Then we definitely need two Conquerors. Conqueror is insane. All right, now we've got seven p spots left. So we'll see what we've got here. Hmm. Okay, let's start getting some heal cards in, I think. So let's get our five alphas in. Let's get... What else do we want in? Let's get... Let's have a look at a composition so far. Heaps of... A few twos, a few threes. I think we need more fours and fives. Let's go to a four drops. So the only... Whoops. The only four drops we got are the No Survivors and the Wraith. What else can we put in that can do some serious work for us? Delta Omega, maybe? 
Sure, they can deal with it easy, but it's the two damage off it, which is quite good. So let's put those in. And maybe Mortar Strikes for that free damage. Hmm. Let's do it. Let's put those two in. Then we look at our composition again. It's quite a lot of early game. Strike and Fade. Maybe we put one draw card in, i.e. Where is it? Lecto. The Cycle. Oh, let's put one Sabotage in. That can get rid of Frontline at a very opportune moment. Let's put one Sabotage in. Okay, so maybe this. This might be a good card deck. Let's jump into a practice game. I don't want to go on high ladder because we're in top 10 at the moment. And see how it goes. So practice match wasn't working. We weren't getting any matches. So we'll just jump into top 10 ladder, I guess. We are currently 13th. So we'll play two games. We might lose both. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure how good Khan's going to be this high up. But we're going to give it a shot. All right. Khan has got... Okay. This actually might be a good matchup for Khan. We'll see. We definitely want to keep Wraith. Armor of Mars is great, but I'm not too sure. We definitely want to keep Ambassador. So let's throw these two. Because this can just get rid of an early game trip we don't want to have. We're going second. So that's annoying. Wow, Khan's voice line. Khan's voice line is very sh very harsh. So we'll just start by swinging. Alright, first random damage hits us. Second one hits him. Oh, both hit us. That's very unlucky, but that's okay. Okay, that's fine. We might just bounce that back. Let's swing face first. One hits him. I'm going to want if the second one hits him. That could be funny. Nah. So now we'll just bounce this to his hand and turn. And next turn we've got no survivors to be able to deal with it. Or Wraith. Wraith could be very good, I think. Hopefully one of the random damage hits him. We get that extra 4-4 troop out, feeling good. Don't be afraid to use Melgator early if it gives you that advantage. Because once you get on top, it's a very good idea to stay on top. What we're going to do here actually is swing here. Swing here. Play no survivors. Get rid of both of them. And swing face. And the random damage hits us again. That's so unlucky. I don't think any single one of the random damages has hit him yet. Okay. I think we... Wraith... Sabotage. Smack his face. Man, again it hits us. And again. Oh my god. We are getting so unlucky. This is almost a joke. Like, it could have hit anything else, but both of, the, both of them had a 1 in 4 chance of hitting us, and they both hit us. Okay, sure, it's fine. Give us the 4 4. And he'll trade out. We're okay with that. So we'll attack face. It hits us again, then we'll attack face. Finally hits him. No survivors, end turn. We needed to get rid of that. We'll potentially lose here just because all of our damages has all of our damages have hit us. I'm going to be very upset about that. Okay, well, we'll start with strike. That's kind of nice. And we don't want to take that damage, so we'll goldstone into it. Wow. And it'll hit us again, won't it? I'm actually very upset. This is why I don't like Khan. <laughs> so... That's actually very upsetting that he's just going to win by attacking us now because Khan's random damage just memed us. That's actually laughable. Okay. So Khan may be your favorite, but he's not mine, that's for sure. <laughs> We're going to jump into one more. Minus 17. Ouch. 
So we'll do one more for the video <laughs> and we'll cry about it a little. That was very unlucky, I think. If a couple of those random damages have just not hit us, we would have been fine there, I think. Ferris Manus, okay. Now, hopefully we go first here. And we do, that's good, okay. I think we don't want the Mortar Strike in our opening and we don't want the Fire Alpha in our opening, but the Lad's Rifle is good. This is decent, this is a good opening. Good, that's that's good damage. Keep, keep that up, hit him again, okay. I'm okay with even damage. It just means we're going faster. And Khan wants to go as fast as possible. Okay, he'll cycle a card. Sure thing. Okay, we'll swing. One hits him. Good. Now the other one is allowed to hit us. And it doesn't hit him. Okay, I like coming back a little here. Then we use the Laz Rifle to get that extra damage in. Turn two Lads Rifle when you're going first is an incredibly strong move. That's fine with us. Because what we can do here is swing here. No survivors. And then continue to swing face. One hits us, that's okay. And the second one hit him. Nice. He's already down to basically half life, that feels good for us. This is a get out of jail free at the moment for us, but ideally we can drop Brond. If he doesn't play anything too severe here, which he doesn't, we can drop Brond. And then we are just going to take this damage. Apparently extra damage. I'm glad one of them hit him. That means he can't bounce it with uh, Melgator. Play another frontliner and buff that one. Okay. Hmm. The plan here... I think the plan here is actually to sacrifice our two fast units to get rid of these. And hopefully a random ping off Khan actually can hit Bronze here. If we get one more ping on him, that would be incredibly good for us. We did. 16 damage in face. Brond MVP. We had to sacrifice two fast troops there, but we got it in the end. You know, in the next turn we've got Mortar Strike and Delta Omega to do things. Okay. So we got one win in, in there with Khan. Plus seven. <laughs> That's what the top, top, leg, uh, top is at the moment. It's plus seven, but minus 17. Alrighty, well, we'll leave this one here with the two games in with Khan, and I hope you get an idea of how I play Khan, and I hope it helps you out. So I'll shop the deck again, so you don't have to look back for it. Here it is. Now, things can obviously change. I always think two Conqueror is such a good idea, because if it gets to that late game, it can just get you out of jail. You definitely need the heal cards. Now, whether you're playing Fi Alpha or you're playing Wonders of Tizak, it's totally up to you now in Khan. I think Fi Alpha is probably better. Even though it costs one more, just for the the extra little body damage. Um, otherwise, you just got to not get so unlucky with your random pings like I did in that first game. I think it would it was so many. I'd love to go back and count them, which I might do and just throw it up as we go. And then just throw up some percentages of the random pings that show us. We'll see. If that was there during the game, then I did it. If not, then I couldn't be bothered. So we'll see how that goes. Alrighty, so... That's the deck, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe down below to keep up to date. Twitter will be in the description. Otherwise, I'll post these in the Discord for Horus Heresy Legions as well. Make sure you join that. That's If you're getting into this game, there's a lot of great community help in that Discord. Um, and people, we're always looking for new community members, and there's heaps of people there. They constantly share the best event decks ideas for the good event decks. You know, they're constantly sharing good good decks for ladder and stuff like that. They'll help you build decks with what you've got because not everybody has every legendary out there. You know, like I won that last game of Agnes Bond. If you don't have him, then obviously you couldn't have done that. But we'll see how we go. Other than that, have a good afternoon and we'll see you later. Bye.